The following program is sponsored by the Today's Home Remodeler Television Network. Welcome to today's Home Remodeler. I'm Stuart Keith and on today's show, well, we're solving a basement water problem. We'll begin by meeting with Brent Montry from Tri-State Basement Repair as he takes us through a home with basement water problems. There he'll show us how water enters a basement and what can be done to professionally fix the problem. Next we'll see how a drain tile system is installed into a basement floor. We'll show the process and the components that make up a complete waterproofing system. And we'll finish up today's program by explaining how a sump pump operates, what homeowners should know about them, and why they should be routinely checked. So we have a lot to cover today, and we'll get started after these messages. One of the most frustrating problems for any homeowner is having water enter their basement. Beyond the damage to personal items, there is often a potential for other problems to develop, including foundation cracks, wood rot, and the possibility of mold. Before a long-term solution can be formed, a professional assessment needs to be done. So we caught up with Brent Montry from Tri-State Basement Repair to walk us through his company's process. Oh, Brent, what a beautiful spring day. Now, this is a little different than the weather we've been experiencing this spring. I mean, a lot of rain. Absolutely, Stu. Uh, that's why we're here today. Uh, this particular uh, year, we've seen a lot of rains, uh, a lot of snowfall, a lot of ground saturation, and actually the water table in this area actually has risen significantly, so any kind of moisture that hits the ground is finding its way into these homeowners' basements. Well, i got to believe that a company like yours is extremely busy, like you said, with the, all the, the wet weather that we've experienced. So when you come out on site, how do you get the process started? Well, the first thing we like to do is look around the landscape, uh, make sure they have proper drainage away from the home. We like to see a good slope away from the home as well as uh, extensions on their downspouts or their gutters. i got to believe when you're pulled up to this house, I can see it just from here sloping all this landscape sloping right towards the foundation which of course leads to water in the basement but with the high water table here that probably is just part of the problem yeah absolutely and we recommend that they get the ground to slope away from the home for proper drainage but in this case the water table is so high that no matter what they do on the outside they still need to address the issue from the inside okay so in a typical job you show up you walk around with the homeowner take a look make some recommendations but your process then really gets down to business in the basement? Yeah, Stu, let's go take a look downstairs. Oh, Brent, the guys are off to a great start down here. Yeah, we like to be as productive as possible. So long before we get to this stage, you come inside with the homeowner. How do you assess the situation? Well, we first talk to the homeowner, trying to uh, find out if there's any particular places that they're having issues. Um, but in this particular instance, there was actually about an inch of water over the entire floor. You're kidding. So this whole basement floor was covered in water? Yeah, absolutely. And so where was it coming in? Well, it's actually coming through the center of the floor as well as through the areas uh, where the foundation wall and the floor meet. And does it matter with your system where the entry point is? No, uh, we address both uh, independently. We have a system that uh, goes around the outside of the foundation walls as well as something through the center of the floor. Now, down here you can see it, they almost essentially put a band-aid on the problem. Look at that, it's still tacky here. Yeah, that actually, uh, just a quick caulk repair, but of course, any amount of hydrostatic pressure or water pushing through is just going to push that right out of the and way. look at the dry lock uh, paint that's on the concrete. That's not even working. It's just flaking right off. Again, hydrostatic pressure, it's yep. not going to work. So a false sense of security when you paint your wall. Now, what happened here? This looks like a big crack that they tried to fix. Yeah, actually, the homeowner contracted another waterproofing company to repair this, and they dug this out on the outside, tried to repair it from the outside, and obviously you can see here that it uh, didn't work very well. Well, I feel for the homeowners. Think of their disappointment and the expense that they went through to get it fixed, and it really didn't solve the problem. But your system will solve a problem like this? Absolutely. Now, obviously, when you arrived on site, everything wasn't moved away from the walls. Was that up to the homeowner to move everything, including about a four or 500-pound concrete sink? 
Well, we try to ask them to get as much as they can out of our way, but if they can't, of course, uh, it's a lot easier for our crew to come in here and move things, uh, you know, such as that sink there. Yeah, they look like they're very efficient. You have seven or eight guys here working. It looks like a choreographed routine where everything's in unison and very efficient. Yeah, we like to get out of here as uh, quick as possible, make it quick and painless for the uh, homeowner. Now over in this corner, I couldn't help but notice the mold and mildew that was growing on this wall. Is that pretty common? Well, it is common, especially when you have water present on the floor, standing water will actually wick itself up and start growing mold and mildew. You know, that's right. You mentioned a few minutes ago that there was an inch or two of water over here just a couple weeks ago. Now, how are you going to solve this homeowner's basement water problem? Well, what we do is we'll come in here and actually remove about 8 to 10 inches of the concrete floor. We'll dig down alongside the footing and we'll install our interior drain tile system. So how do you remove the concrete? Well, we use jackhammers to remove the concrete and then they haul the material up and down in buckets, 5-gallon pails. Okay, so that explains why I'm seeing buckets of debris being carried out here. Now, what happens over, like in this instance, here's a partition wall. How do you get around that? Do you have to take out the whole wall? Well, Stu, that's not a problem. Uh, in this case, we can actually go underneath that wall without doing any kind of destruction to the wall itself. Okay, and this is kind of a rough wall, but what happens if I have a finished basement? I have carpet on the floor, I have, you know, nice walls. Can you still solve my problem? Yeah, we can actually pull back the carpet and uh, we should be able to install our system without a problem. Well, you know, it's back-breaking work. It's pretty dirty and dusty. Is there a concern about that dust that's in the air getting into some of the mechanicals? Well, we like to take a lot of time and cover all the homeowner's belongings with the plastic. We cover the stairway, carpet, and hardwood floors, and we actually use a negative air machine that will actually suck in all the dust and filter the air. And that's pretty effective at keeping it clean? Yeah, it works very well. Okay, so what's the next step in the process? Well, we'll start removing the concrete and uh, digging our trench so we can install our system. Well, why don't we get out of their way and we'll pick it up a little further along. Tune will be doing some jackhammering and start to solve this home's basement water problem. When we continue with today's Home Remodeler. At Tri-State Basement